Dr. Marker, and I'm the director of the La Lemelbaum Institute for Immune Oncology in Sheba. I'd like to thank the organizers for the kind invitation to deliver this talk on the subject of immunotherapy for metastatic melanoma in the year 2020. Here in my disclosures, this is a BMS-sponsored presentation. Until this, year, until this decade, we had mostly ineffective modalities to treat metastatic melanoma. We had TTAC and it interleukin-2. AL2, as you all remember, is very toxic, but still it was able to cure about 5% of the patients, thereby keeping the hope that immunotherapy would become a pillar of cancer treatment not only for melanoma, but also for other types of malignancies as well. This decade has been the uh, revolutionary decade of immuno-oncology, in which the immune checkpoints were harnessed with the novel immune checkpoint inhibitors, which became a standard of care in oncology. The epilimumab, the CT anti-CTLA-4, was the first drug to demonstrate efficacy in a randomized phase three trial in metastatic melanoma patients as compared to DTAC. As you can see in this pivotal trial that was published already a decade ago, EP has, uh, has demonstrated clear cut overall survival benefit over DTAC, essentially doubling the overall survival of the patients. In uh, this pooled analysis, famous pooled analysis by Dirk Schadendorf, it shows that uh, those patients who reached the three year milestone of survival um, probably cured of their disease as they continue with an ongoing unmaintained uh, survival for 10 years. And now we know that it is also true for the 15 year time point of follow up. So, EP was actually, as I said, the first drug ever to impact over survival of metastatic melanoma patients, as demonstrated in a phase three randomized trial. But 20% is not enough. And here is where the anti PD1 kicks in. Uh, in a series of different publication studies and compounds, uh, NTPD1 has, de has demonstrated uh, superiority in terms of clinical efficacy. Here are the uh, results of the two main trials, the Checkmate of 66, uh, comparing NIVO to DTIC in the first line setup, and the Keynote 006, comparing PEMBRO to EP in the, also in the first line setup. And in both cases, the NTPD1 has demonstrated clear cut efficacy in terms of uh, response rate, PFS, and overall survival as compared to the previous standard of care. In terms of the long term follow up, these are the five year follow up results of the Kino 6, showing that the uh, NTPD1 treated patients show uh, 27% uh, progression, freeze, uh, progression free at the four year milestone and more than 40% of the patients are alive at the five-year milestone, which is amazing as compared to the median survival of just six to eight months a uh, few years prior to that. In context of the uh, BRFMEC biological uh, uh, therapy, as expected, patients who were treated with, uh, with immunotherapy after receiving prior uh, BRFMEC inhibitors and uh, exhibiting disease progression, have, uh, have inferior results as compared to those patients who receive immunotherapy in, uh, in the first line or without uh, progressing on prior BRF neck inhibitors. Going to these results, PD-1 blockade has, became, has become the, ma the main standard of care treatment for metastatic melanoma patients. It provides a robust long-term durable clinical efficacy. And as you all know, uh, it is also has an excellent safety profile. One of the main features of immunotherapy is the ability to stop treatment uh, without progression. Uh, in the Kino 006, it was pre-planned to stop treatment after or um, in the responding patients after completing two years of their protocol of therapy. And in uh, this ASCO presentation three years ago, uh, Carl and Robert show that those patients continued to uh, have to show uh, uh, disease, uh, to show control of the disease without any further progression, despite not continuing active treatment. We uh, can see here the 
uh, updated results of the same cohort of 103 patients. Uh, most, most of them were PRs, but some of them were CRs and SD. And in two-year uh, milestone after elective treatment cessation, more than 80% of the patients were progression-free, and more than 90% of them were, uh, were still alive. At the Ela Institute, we have also analyzed our real-world cohorts, and this is a, a manuscript that was recently submitted for publication, analyzing 106 metastatic melanoma patients treated with anti-PD-1 based therapy for at least six months. Uh, all of these patients underwent elective treatment cessation, and uh, as an inclusion criterion, they all had to have at least two years of follow-up post-cessation. About a third of the patients progressed. And as you can see here on the, on the left, the, uh, the progression-free survival was actually very similar to the one report, to those reported by Caroline Robert. Uh, the CR patients, about not more than 90% of them were still progression-free after two years of treatment cessation, and about 70% of the PR patients were still progression-free. Looking at the overall survival, the vast majority of the patients were still uh, alive at the two, three, and four-year milestones uh, after treatment cessation, essentially with flattening of the curve. We also ask ourselves, uh, uh, like others, uh, what about reinduction after disease recurrence in these patients? About a third of the patients recurred, and all of them were, or more, almost all of them, were re-exposed to uh, immunotherapy. And in more than a third of the cases, a uh, second PR or a second CR was achieved. So reinduction is definitely feasible, and it also uh, it is also similar to results published by others. So it seems that treatment with immunotherapy can be stopped without hindering unmaintained response and can therefore be stopped safely. One of the main questions is how long to treat? with immunotherapy until treatment cessation. So in a pragmatic way, we plotted the hazard ratio for progression versus the length of treatment uh, duration in our data set. And it seems that the optimal treatment duration is no less than 18 months. The, it doesn't seem that, that there is a main di big difference between 18 to 24 months. This is probably, so this is probably the, uh, the uh, optimal treatment length. In terms of uh, special subpopulations, so one of them is the elder, elderly patients above the age of 80. And in this uh, publication that uh, we published uh, last year, uh, we were surprised to find that uh, patients who are, uh, who are more, than eight, or more than 80 years old actually respond even better than the young ones, with more than seven, between 70 to 75% of, the, uh, of these patients uh, achieving a partial or a complete response without any additional toxicity. So this is a new standard of oncological care for elderly patients. And I remind you, these patients uh, could not be treated with uh, the old standard of care treatments, such as chemotherapy, IL-2, or others. What about the rationale to combine CTLA-4 and PD-1? From the scientific perspective, it is very clear. It is the CTLA-4 blockade uh, broadens the repertoire of the T cells and the NTPD-1 increases the effect of functions. Checkmate 067 randomized, uh, checked, uh, uh, tested EP versus NIVO versus the EP NIVO in the randomized fashion. In terms of response rate, EP NIVO was clearly superior to NIVO with uh, around 60% overall response rate as compared to 45%. In terms of PFS and OS, uh, we can see here the result of the long-term follow-up with what seems to be as a clinically meaningful uh, superiority of EP NIVO as compared to NIVO, both for PFS and for OS, with a 7 to 8 uh, percent absolute uh, superiority for the EP NIVO arm. However, from the statistical perspective, we need to, rem we need to remember that this study was not powered to test the difference between EP NIVO and NIVO, but rather the difference between EP NIVO and EP, which the difference is very robust, as you can see. The, uh, the uh, treatment with EP NIVO 
is effective for both for the B wild B of wild type and B of mutant patients. The problem with EP NIVO, however, is the toxicity. While NIVO uh, or PD1 monotherapy is considered to be a uh, very safe treatment with only uh, 8% of treatment uh, discontinuation due to uh, treatment related AEs and around 15 to 20% of grade 3 4 toxicities, EP NIVO leads to, more, to around a third of the patients uh, discontinuing the, the treat treatment. 60% of the patients uh, suffering from grade 3, 4 toxicities, and almost all of the patients suffer from any grade toxicity. Nevertheless, treatment discontinuation due to immune-related AEs does not affect the clinical outcome. Interestingly, it raises a point. It raises a point that patients who continue to uh, maintain clinical benefit without getting any treatment, not uh, without, get, without getting any treatment. And this is called treatment-free survival. We can look at the treatment-free survival of nivo EP, shown here in light blue. Uh, these patients derive, derive their benefit without any further treatment. So in about half of the patients, the EP nivo are treatment-free as compared to the nivo in which only quarter of the patients uh, are treatment-free while maintaining their uh, clinical benefits. Looking into the real-world data from the flat iron data in the United States, uh, we, this is a retrospective analysis from real-world uh, databases, uh, about 450 patients. And uh, in uh, in attempt to look at the uh, factor factors that are associated with response, first-line treatment, so we see that nivo EP is superior in the first line. Older patients uh, are also uh, achieve a greater benefit. And when we look into the uh, clinical efficacy parameters, nivo EP achieves 50% response rate, very similar to the clinical trials, and it seems to be, and it is, superior to nivo both in terms of PFS and OS. Again, this is a retrospective comparison uh, of real-world databases, uh, and it is not prospective uh, randomization, but nevertheless, it is very encouraging to see that the uh, data also shows or presents itself in real-world uh, scene. When we analyzed uh, our cohorts, uh, or 160 or 70 patients treated uh, with EP NIVO, we saw an objective, an objective overall response rate of 48%, 60% when the patients were in the first line, at only 25% when the patients were treated with EP NIVO in the advanced line. Again, very similar to the clinical trials. When we looked for patient characteristics that are associated with response or with response to EP NIVO, we found uh, the factors that are already known. Low LDH, low disease burden, good performance status, first line are all associated with, uh, with response. And we also show that at least two or more combination courses are associated with response. Breaking down the PFS and OS, uh, into first line setup or advanced line, you can see the marked differences uh, in these two setups with the patients treated in the first line actually never reaching a median survival. And we're talking here about uh, five, six, seven years of follow up. This is again very similar to the clinical trial results. When, when breaking down the PFS and OS according to uh, initial response, uh, the Good results are observed for the PR and CR patients, uh, uh, as you can see here. Importantly, when the patient reach when the patients reach the two two and a half year milestone, the curve flattens, and both for the PFS and for the OS. In our cohort, also about sixty percent of the patients that uh, suffered from grade three four toxicities, very similar to the clinical trial. And when we plotted the onset of the toxicity, uh, toxicities, we can see that 
the early toxicities are mainly pneumonitis and hepatitis, while the later toxicities are more predominantly, predominantly neurologic, rheumatologic, and endocrine toxicities. As in, our, in, other, uh, in the other previous reports, in our cohort as well, the patients who suffered from treatment-limiting toxicity had similar outcome, oncological outcome, as those patients who continued uh, treatment without any interruption. We uh, did a multivariate analysis uh, for death, and the, uh, the good hazard ratios are associated with, uh, uh, with uh, performance status, early line of treatment, and number of combination therapies. And of course, uh, response is associated with, uh, uh, with lower chances of, uh, uh, of full dying. So an EP nevo is definitely an excellent uh, standard of care for the treatment of metastatic melanoma. EP nevo and immunotherapy in general can also affect our brain metastasis. And in the randomized phase two Australian ABC trial, it shows that EP nevo is superior in terms of uh, progression free survival and overall survival as compared to nivolumab only. Checkmate 214 uh, uh, analyzed EP nevo in 101 patients with asymptomatic brain metastasis. And importantly, this study shows that the intercranial and extracranial response rates are equivalent and similar to the response rates that were shown uh, in the Checkmate 067 study. Survival curves correspond with the good responses. About 75% of the patients were still alive at the 18 months landmark. So EP Nivo uh, offers a good therapeutic option for patients with asymptomatic brain metastasis. So to summarize, in immunotherapy is an important standard of care therapy for metastatic melanoma because it offers good response rate, and durable efficacy with prolonged survival. Also, treatment can be stopped. It offers a very good, safe, and efficacious modality for the treatment of elderly patients. Whether to treat the, with monotherapy or combination still relies, this decision still relies on mostly on clinical parameters. And immunotherapy is shown to be effective against, uh, against brain metastasis. In terms of agreements and disagreements, it's very clear that immunotherapy can offer a response, good response rate with this decent kinetics with potential of long-term effect, and it is efficacious for patients with any BRF status. For BRF wild type patients, it is actually the only option that is available. Regarding unclear questions, for example, how long to treat our data indicates that the optimal period for treatment is between 18 to 24 months. Uh, specifically, our, in our institute, we tend to opt for the combinations of treatment and less for the monotherapy. Nevertheless, there are definitely subpopulations that, uh, for, for whom monotherapy is uh, more advisable. For example, elderly populations, patients who are more fragile, patients with active significant autoimmunities, or patients with a solid organ transplantation. Reinduction after disease pro progression is definitely possible uh, with a 30 to 40 percent chances of response. It is still unclear whether to initiate what is the right sequence, whether to start with IO or with targeted therapy. For, uh, for that, we will still have to wait to get the final results from, the, from studies such as the SECOMBIC trial. Last point on patients who, exam who demonstrate primary resistance to immunotherapy especially patients with beer of wild type. For these patients, we still need to wait for the development of novel technologies, but there are new encouraging uh, evidence that, for example, that were reported in the last ESMO. Uh, for example, the combination of PD-1 blockade plus TKIs could offer a very good, uh, uh, a very good uh, therapeutic option for patients who demonstrate primary resistance. With that, I would like to conclude. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.